Hello, Church of Our Savior. It is Wednesday, June 19th. It is Juneteenth, the day we celebrate and commemorate the end of slavery in this nation, and also a day that we remember that our African-American brothers and sisters continue to struggle to achieve full equality and justice in our nation. And so it seems like a good day to reflect spiritually on this human tendency to build walls, to erect barriers that separate us from others, especially others who are different than we are, different due to race or religion or ethnic background or political beliefs or whatever. There are many reasons why we build such walls, of course. Sometimes it's just due to fear and ignorance. We, we don't understand others People that we don't understand seem fearful, strange to us, frightening, and so we try to keep them away from us. Or there's always that egotistical need that we have to assert ourselves. Somehow, if I can exclude others, it makes me feel better about myself. Or we may just not want to be challenged, challenged by different ideas or new perspectives. But whatever the reasoning, Usually erecting those kinds of walls, making those kinds of divisions is very harmful and it does a lot of damage. And we need to remember that Jesus, the whole thrust of his ministry, his life, his teaching goes directly against that. Jesus is not about creating divisions. Jesus is about growing community, which he does in a very radical way. For example, in his time, one of the chief walls that existed between people was the wall between those perceived as clean and those perceived as unclean. And Jesus was having none of it. He welcomed everybody into his community. He touched lepers. He ate with outcasts. In his mind, no one was unclean. Everyone was welcome. In the same way, in his day, there was a pretty rigid separation between men and women and what men could do and what women could do. And Jesus just disregarded that. He welcomed women into his community. He enjoyed the presence and company of women, interacted with them freely. They were leaders. Over and over again, Jesus shows us that God wants us to grow community and remember that we are one with each other. But perhaps most importantly, Jesus indicates that what makes us one with each other is that we are all one with God. He himself knows an intimate relationship with Abba, his father, and he calls us to enjoy the same kind of intimate relationship as well. The father is in me and I am in the father. And in the same way, you can be in me and I will be in you. And together we will all be close to God, all be close to each other. He promises the Holy Spirit will be poured into everyone's hearts so that all of us might actually taste and experience that sense of unity with God and with each other. And it was a distinctive feature of the early church that people experienced uh, an expansive sense of community. They really came to see that, yes, we are one in Christ and therefore one with each other. Paul says it so beautifully in Galatians. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. As we understand, experience our unity with God in Christ, we are then set free to see our unity with each other. This is one of the reasons why that wondrous, mysterious doctrine of the Trinity is so important. Not that we fully understand it or comprehend it, but it gives testimony to the fact that the Creator God, Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Spirit, they are distinct, and yet at the same time, they are fully one. And in the same way, we are distinct, we are different in many ways, and yet we are one. 
we're called to live into that. And it needs to be acknowledged that one of the chief causes of sin, maybe at the very heart of all sin, is alienation, a sense of being separated from God, separated from others. Jesus came to take that away, to remove that sense of separation from God, to take away the power of sin to divide us. In his life, his death, his resurrection, the veil is torn apart and our unity is fully revealed so that all of us can live it and enjoy it. As a result, as Thomas Keating, the Trappist writer once said, right now the chief thing that separates us from God is the thought that we are separated from God. So as we pray in whatever way we pray, as we come to church and worship, one of the most important intentions we can bring to our prayer and our worship is to know our unity with Christ, to know our unity with God. When we pray, we want to bring that with us. This desire, God, show me, help me feel and experience that I am that close to you, that you are in me and I am in you. When you go to church and receive Holy Communion, actually eat the body and blood of Christ, to let that be an intention. Come into me, live in me, help me know, Lord Christ, that you are within me and that I am one with you and I am one with everybody who is also sharing in that great Eucharistic feast. It's been my experience that when I feel most separated from God, then I tend to feel most separated from others. It's in moments of feeling alienated that I am more prone to build walls and to create divisions and to feel myself hiding from, separated from others. And conversely, when I feel closest to God, when I have a lively sense of the spirit within me and my unity with Christ, that's when I feel most open to my unity with other people my closeness to others, even those I disagree with, even those I dislike. We live in a terribly divided and polarized nation, a divided and polarized world. The world needs the witness of unity. It needs the church to provide that as a living sign that despite our differences, Ultimately, we are one. We are called to live together as one. I do not believe that is a warm, fuzzy feeling. I believe it is a rock solid truth, a truth that we are called to see and to embrace. For our own peace and spiritual well being, and for the peace and the spiritual well being of the whole world. God loves you. I love you. Peace.